Howdy cunts, my name is Jack Southall and I am here today for my Extreme Rules 2015 review. Um, it was acceptable, you know, everyone's saying that, oh, this, this show sucked and it was terrible, well, I don't know, some people have been saying, like, it was an average show, which I think it is, um, you know, a couple of people are just taking it to the extreme, no pun intended, <laughs> I just noticed that, but... Anyway, let's get on to the show. So, um, our, the pre-show was not New Day versus, what was it, fucking Cesaro and Kid. They actually got moved to the main show, which I was happy about. Um, instead, unfortunately, Daniel Bryan did not participate, which, which fucking sucks, man. You know, I, I hate seeing Daniel Bryan injured. I love seeing him, you know, competing and, uh, it just sucks. So... Then Bad News Barrett took on Neville, just like I predicted in my predictions video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, so that's points to me. But So Neville comes in. I didn't see the match, but what I heard, Neville put on a pretty good show. He's such a great competitor. Um, a little nitpick, though. I don't get why he's wearing purple, but he calls his finishing move the Red Arrow. But that's just a nitpick. Who gives a fucking shit? Um, on to the actual show, our opening contest is a Chicago street fight, Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper. This was a lot of fun, um, you know, it wasn't absolutely completely psycho or anything, but, um, they start off in the ring for a bit, and then they go to the backstage area, and they brawl over there, and then there's this car, this SUV, Harper gets into it, he's driving off, and then Ambrose gets onto the car, and they fucking just go for the next 30 minutes. It kind of reminded me of um, the backlot brawl that Rowdy Roddy Piper and Goldust had at WrestleMania 12, if you guys remember that. And um, they had um, the cameras following him, like the OJ Simpson chase, and then they came back to the ring, and then I think Roddy beat Goldust. But, um, yeah, the match must have still been going, so that was a nice little thing. Um, then we get an authority segment with Kane, Rollins, Triple H, pretty much, you know, everyone that took up, like, three quarters of Raw last week. Um, they're typical shit. Triple H is like, oh, you better do what's best for business, and, you know, that Seth Rollins is a spoiled little punk. Extreme Rules was in Chicago this year, um, so um, they might be taking a little shot of punk, or maybe I'm just nitpicking, whatever. Next up, we've got Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler in a kiss me arse match, fucking fella. <sighs> Why this? Why a kiss me arse match? Kiss my arse match. Excuse me, kiss me arse match. Just so stupid. Um, they could have done so many other matches. They could have done, like, Falls Count Anywhere, even though that's what the... Sh no, Chicago Street Fight, you have to pin your opponent in the world. You know, they could have done, like, a Fools Count Anywhere match. Yeah, that would have been easy, but no, they had to do a Kiss Me Ass match because Vince probably thought it was funny. Oh, you know it would be funny if uh, Seamus is Iris, so let's make a Kiss My Ass match, but instead he said Me Ass. Ha ha ha. Terrible Vince impression. Um, so, yeah, they, they had a decent enough match. It wasn't incredible or anything, but... You know, it was decent enough. Um, what I didn't expect was Dolph Ziggler actually won this match, which, you know, personally, as a Ziggler fan, I didn't have a problem with. Storyline-wise, it didn't make any sense. I believe Sheamus just should have won this match, but, you know, Ziggler gets a win, so I can pass on that. And then Ziggler, instead of pulling down, because, no, because you know, it's PG and you can't show him one butt crack, he pulls it up and shows, like, half of his bum, like, and all that. And Seamus is like, oh, I'm going to give it. No, 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 I can't do it. And then, like, it looks like he's about to do it and then gives him poof, a nut shot there. And instead, Seamus pulls his trunks up and sees his half marshmallow and, Zigl and pretty much wipes Sigler's face on his ass, which was kind of disgusting and gay. Um, so... Seamus kind of won this match, so I was kind of right with my prediction, but 
Anyway, stupid match type. The actual match was pretty alright. But um, the match type was fucking stupid. The ending of the match was stupid. This was just full of stupid. Um, next up, we got Cesaro and Tyson Kidd versus the New Day for the WWE Tag Team Championships. This was a great match. I really enjoy great tag team action. You know, you may think that the New Day are a shit gimmick, which they are, but... Ooh, little hair sticking up there. But, um, yeah, you know, free, happy black guys singing, you know, gospel songs, New Day, and that stupid shit with... And they used to look like a bunch of rejected blue Power Rangers. Now they've got like fucking grey and green and white. That's their new colour scheme. And there's turning heel. Um, I don't. I think they've turned full on heel. I don't know. I'm still gonna have to wait a couple of you know maybe like tomorrow night on Raw, um, whatever. But um. Enjoyed it. There were a lot of great spots. Cesaro and Kid were over. My boy Tyson did great. You know, Cesaro, of course, was great. Um, and i got to give it up to Kofi and Biggie. They did a really good job. Um, it was really funny seeing Xavier Woods telling the fans, hey, hey, be positive and shit. Um, at least WWE knows that their gimmick sucks and they're doing something with it. So, um, to end off this match, um, New Day, I think it was like, Kofi, so they do this big spot where everyone comes in and interferes and everyone takes each other out and then um, Cesaro's in the ring and then Kofi gets a roll up I think as Xavier like distracted the referee beforehand got the roll up and the New Day are your new tag team champions yeah. I don't know about the New Day being tag team champions if this means like a change in their character you know, and they express more of that heelish side in them, then I'm all for it. But, you know, like, it's kind of sucky, because I was really starting to enjoy Cesaro and Kid. They were starting to, you know, become, like, relevant, even though they've only been a team since December of last year, which is when I started this channel. But, it doesn't matter. The match was great. If you're going to watch one match from this pay-per-view would probably be this one when it comes to like actual match quality you know so New Day wins and then afterwards they um have a backstage interview with Renee Young and then was it Renee Young or Eden? I don't give a fuck I think it was Renee and then all of a sudden the SUV pops up and in, in comes Harper and Ambrose who must have been fighting at CM Punk's house or something I don't know and um I think this is, and then uh, Ambrose was going to jump on Harper, he ducks out of the way and he lands on the New Day. They go back into the ring and it's just filled with chairs, like ECW kind of style, even though it was nowhere near as extreme as ECW. Chairs are scattered, they're doing crazy shit with it, and um, Ambrose ends up winning, which I'm really happy about. Um, there's a lot of rumours that Ambrose is going to win Money in the Bank, I hope they're true. I really hope they're true, because I love Ambrose, he's a sick cunt, um, and Harper did really well in this match as well, did really well, um, like I said before, it wasn't too exciting, but they both did well for what they had to do, and um, I'm just happy Ambrose won a match on pay-per-view for a change, which is awesome, um, then we get to the Russian chain match for the United States Championship. Rusev taking on the champion, Satan. Oh, I mean, John Cena. Um, of course, who do you think won this match? Cena, of course. Um, you know, everyone freaked out. Oh, Cena's buried Rusev. Let me just get something off my chest for a second. How the fuck did John Cena bury Rusev? Like, he's lost twice. I mean, remember what happened last year with Bray Wyatt? You know, like, yes, he lost to... John Cena at WrestleMania, yes, he lost at Payback in a really good last man standing match, can I just say, but, you know, he got to wrestle the fucking Undertaker at this year's WrestleMania, so how could he be buried? Like, I don't know, they just, wrestling fans just seem to find any way to hate on poor little rapper Doo. um, 
but who am I to know? So, yeah, pretty good. It was an alright match, um, just for what it was. I wish they could have done some, you know, blood, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, a thing that I saw was um, Lana, who went was out with Rusev, she, everyone was chanting, we want Lana. She got up on the apron, and she she started accepting and she's like, oh, thanks, I know I'm hot and stuff. And Rusev's like, oh, piss off. And uh, she did, and she looked really sad, and everyone booed. So, a possible Lana face turn in the works, you know? I'd, I'd be down for, for that. Um... It'll probably happen at Payback. He'll be treating um, Lana like shit during the build-up to the pay -per to Payback, you know, because it was revealed that he's going to face Cena again in an I Quit match, which, come, come on, guys, it's an I Quit match. We all know Cena's going to win that one, but it's still a burial because it's John Cena. If it was anyone else, it wouldn't be. But um, Lana, I think Lana's going to turn face... They need a new hot diva, even though we've got plenty of them. I don't know if she's going to be wrestling, though. Has she been trained to wrestle? I, I've got no idea. But, um, you know, it, the, the ending bit I really enjoyed. Um, they all touched three corners, each of them. Um, then Cena hit the AA and got the fourth one, so he couldn't be buried. He didn't, like, beat the shit out of him throughout the entire match. Rusev got some good hits on him. Like, I think, um, well, he did some good spots. Um, this is why you should watch the pay-per-view, and then you'll understand. Well, it wasn't technically a pay-per-view, because you saw it free on the network, but whatever. Um, yeah, Cena wins, just as I predicted. What did you expect? Um, during the night, we got some network stuff that I'll quickly talk about. Um, it's not really a network show, but tough enough, we saw a couple of entries, some of them were just, you know, they're not going to get through, and then some of them, you just saw their muscles, and like, yep, they're going through. Like, one guy had a failed football career, yep, he's in. Military, yep, he's in. Good-looking girl, good body, yep, she's in. Uh, so that's just what WWE sees in talent, but whatever. Um, and then, this week's going to be a huge week for the network, because tomorrow night, um, Jerry Springer's hosting his Too Hot for TV thing, which he's just probably going to go through old material of WWE stuff that was raunchy and edgy. Um, if he doesn't show the cats, because remember the cat, which used to be with China, if they don't show her tits completely uncensored, I'm going to cancel my subscription. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and on Tuesday is the King of the Ring, which I'm really excited for. That should... I'll probably do a review of that, because that looks really interesting. Um, I, I enjoy the concept of the King of the Ring. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they get like a world championship spot, or someone's going to get a king gimmick, or whatever. Um, Wednesday, I believe, is Mick Foley's stand-up show, Cheap Pops. Um, I don't know, it could be good. Um, Thursday is Chris Jericho's podcast with Stephanie McMahon. That should be interesting. And Friday is, they're going to recap Mayweather and versus Big Show from WrestleMania 24. And they're doing it just to cash in on this fight with whatever his fucking name is on Saturday. So, yeah, it should be an interesting week for the network. And next week is going to be uh, Mr. Cocker's Fist's um, documentary of his build-up to WrestleMania 31 as part of the WWE 24 series. So, I... I'm looking forward to that. Should be good. Uh, anyway, on to the Divas Championship match. Nikki Bella versus Naomi. I'm happy that Naomi got a new theme song. Yes, it wasn't the greatest theme song of all time, but at least it was different. She got a new uh, Titan Tron and everything. She's got a new. She's got a newish look. She's got friggin' light up glasses and light up shoes that change color during the match, which. <laughs> I, I don't know, I thought it was funny. I, I love Naomi, you know I mean? and Nikki Bella was looking good as usual in her white. You know, two hot divas going at it. I, I'm not complaining. Um, Nikki Bella retained, you know, I don't really have a problem with that. If they build up Naomi a bit, I think Naomi and Paige are probably going to have a feud. Maybe at like payback, Naomi wins the championship. I think 
it's official that the Bellas have turned face, in my opinion, because I read up on Twitter that Paige being a baby face, she was hoping Nikki Bella wins. And then I saw Lana, who was a heel before um, that shit going on with Rusev and Cena, she said that she hopes that uh, Naomi wins and beats the Bellas. So I think the Bellas have turned face, you know? Doesn't. What's going The Divas Division's such a mess right now. Like, they're changing face, heel, like, constantly. More like Big Show and Kane. But, uh, anyway, speaking of Big Show, he faced off against Mr. Cocker's Fist. <laughs> Roman Reigns in the Last Man Standing match, which was surprisingly pretty good. I know uh, some people didn't like it because they still have that blind hatred for Roman Reigns. I, I still have respect for the guy. He did a great job in this match. And so did the Big Show. You have to give this guy credit, you know? As much as I love to give that poor bastard shit, he did a really good job and took a lot of hard bumps. Um, some of the highlights for me, um, there were a lot of table spots. I think he choke slammed Roman Reigns off the top rope and onto... Two tables, which are brutal. Um, and then he ran, speared through a table, which was, like, set up near the ring post. And then Roman Reigns did his typical spear through the barricade, did a WWE 13 moment. Because uh, remember when you played 13 and there was always a spear through the barricade moment. Uh, and then afterwards, B Big Show got some steel steps next to the announcer's table. And then he was... Gonna set up like a choke slam for um, Roman Reigns through the now table, and then he pushed him off, and then he speared um, Big Show through the Spanish now table, which was pretty cool. And then Big Show, no, not Big Show, Roman Reigns did an Alberto Del Rio and push, or Alberto El Patron, is that his name now? From Lucha Underground and Ring of Honor, whatever. And uh, he pushed the table the um, other announced table onto Big Show and uh, pretty much killed him and Roman Reigns won the match. i I got to give this up for Roman Reigns. He did a pretty good job in this match. I'm not like these blind Roman Reigns fans who hate everything he fucking does. If he does something good, I'll admit it. You know, like back in January, I, I know I raged when Roman Reigns won because why should I like this guy? He cuts shitty promo. He's not that good in the ring. Wrestling Big Show and Kane in one-on-one -on -one matches. And then, like, fast forward to, like, Fastlane, WrestleMania, and then this, when he's putting on good matches with um, guys like Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar, and fuck, even the Big Show. If you put it in the good, in a good setting or with a good opponent, you can get the best out of Roman Reigns. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Roman Reigns. Um, I was actually cheering for you during this match, because I don't want that prick to win. Then, before we get to the main event, I think this might have happened beforehand, whatever. Um, Bo Dallas came out with his bow tee. That's what I'm going to call for now on, bow tee. And Ryback, and he was talking shit about Chicago and whatever, and then Ryback came in and destroyed the poor bastard. Um, I've been hearing rumours that, with Bray Wyatt calling out people and you know, lifting weights and all that. I thought it was going to be like Roman Reigns or Randy Orton. Apparently, it's going to be Ryback. Now, I can understand why some people wouldn't like that, but also, this can elevate both guys. You know, Ryback's in that mid-card, sometimes upper mid-card range, and Bray Wyatt is in that upper mid-card, almost main of like semi-main eventer. So I think this could do a lot of good for Ryback and could do a lot of good for Bray Wyatt, if you think it that way. And with Bo Dallas growing like a beard or something, he might be joining up with his brother. So maybe like Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas are gonna... Bo Dallas is gonna go all creepy and shit, which I dig. You know, maybe like... And they could be a tag team, you know. That's just what I'm saying. And you could also bring back Rowan and Harper, which is a good idea. You should definitely do it and rejoin the Wyatt family would be fucking amazing. And then we uh, get to the Steel Cage, RKO Band, WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins with Kane as the gatekeeper. Uh, I was... I was kind of... It wasn't as good as I expected, unfortunately. Um, I watched this match live. Everything else I watched um, after this match, because I had to go to work, because... 
you know, at work and shit. Uh, it was alright. Like, the ending, you know, I thought Kane just kind of stole this match a little bit. You know, choke slamming J&J. And it was looked like he was going to choke slam Orton. And he didn't. He choke slam Rollins. And he choke slam Orton. And he was like, what side are you on, Kane? Like, honestly, what fucking side are you on? He, it's obvious he's going to turn face. Leave the authority. Wear the mask and just kill Rollins. Even though Rollins will probably retain. You know, if this is a chance to get Kane in his mask and breathing fire and kicking ass, you know, I'm down for that. Um, it's just this corporate Kane I hate. You know, big red machine Kane kicks ass, you know. Um, but he eventually drapes the arm over Rollins, but Orton kicks out. There's a whole bunch of shenanigans happening. Um, I don't get why... Orton would pick a steel cage match to let the authority out because that plan fucking failed. And then because there's no rule book about, you know, Orton hitting anyone else in the match with the RKO, he hits Kane with the RKO, and then he hits then Rollins hits Orton with the RKO and he gets the win. You know, everyone's saying, Oh, Rollins hit the RKO, he shouldn't win the match. And the commentators were actually arguing about it, which I kinda digged. But also, like Fuck, uh, my brain just died for a minute. But, you know, like, it, it doesn't say anything about R Rollins not using the move, so it should be okay with him using the move. I liked how um, Orton did a pedigree during the match. I thought that was a nice thing. But, um, you know, Orton's Rollins wins, which I'm happy about. I got, like, most of these matches right. The only matches I didn't get right were New Day, Ziggler versus Sheamus, and the Kiss Me Ass match, which was fucking stupid. And I'm, I'm just looking here on my notes. And uh, Nikki Bell Naomi match. So, um, overall, I did pretty well with the predictions. Uh, what I think of this show, it wasn't as great as I expect. Well, it was better than what I expected, but not that good. Um, I'm going to give this show... Ugh, a six and a half. Yeah, that will do good. Six and a half. Um, match of the night is going to go to Cesaro and Tyson Kidd versus The New Day. That was a fucking awesome tag team match. Yeah, The New Day won, but Cesaro was awesome. My boy Tyson was awesome. Um, and Kofi and Biggie are great athletes, so i got to give it to them. Anyway, uh, this, this is just going to wrap it up. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts of Extreme Rules. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It would be the best decision you ever make in your life. Um, trust me, it will. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at jackamanlol 31 And I'll catch you guys tomorrow with my Raw review. Um, hopefully something goes good there. And the next day for my King of the Ring review, 2015. It should be fun. And uh, see you guys then. I'm out in 3, 2, 1.